Hey, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Wendy. Hope everyone's having a glorious day. And our beautiful Savior, King Yeshua HaMashiach. King Yeshua, our Messiah. Our Holy Redeemer. Our Beloved. Our First Love. For He is our first love. We follow him wherever he leads us. Okay, I know it's been, I guess it's been a few days since I've made a video, uh, but just everyday occurrences come up. Nothing bad or anything, it's just sometimes I have things to take care of and I don't get to uh, the videos so just to let you guys know you know nothing's been wrong or anything sometimes I have things come up and um, so anyway I wanted to tell you a story about what I did this morning when I was taking my husband to work um, it's funny now but it was not funny then to me there was well going down the back roads there's all these electric company trucks they were putting in uh, electric poles all down the road and so all you saw was white arms sticking up into the air the whole way and of course they had the traffic pattern laid out and they had the um, the cones and everything and so I wasn't the first one I was behind several other cars and this was a pretty long stretch usually it's just a, a little hop skip and jump and you're done but this was a pretty long stretch and so I follow the cars in front of me. You know, there's a pilot car up in the very front leading leading us to, you know, throughout the cones and everything, the traffic cones. So I'm following behind and I don't know, sometimes I don't know, I get into a zone, I guess, to where um I'm just, I know I'm driving and, you know, I'm, I'm driving, but my mind's just elsewhere. And so I got into that zone, as you call it, and the car in front of me, well, he took a right. And so what does Wendy do? Wendy follows that car, and all of a sudden, the electric truck started moving and I didn't know what was going on and so I was stuck there between the electric truck and the line of traffic moving beside me that I couldn't go anywhere and the whole time I see the guy in my rearview mirror shaking his head <laughs> at me and um, so finally I get into the, the the right lane again and I follow I followed the cars out to the right place but I was I was not laughing at that moment I was mm, had anxiety because I knew I was in the wrong spot and I could see that guy shaking his head at me and just the the emotions that come up upon you and I didn't I didn't curse or anything thank you Lord for that but I did get angry and I don't know we don't know what all sins we have that are out there that are unknown I pray to be forgiven of my unknown sins that I commit every day 
but um yeah it was uh it was not funny at the time i was i was very shook up at the time and i'm sure everyone can relate to traffic incidences you know how they're just not funny when they happen but um king yeshua has a way of comforting you and um <laughs> making you laugh about it later and that's what I did a little ways down the road after I dropped Donald off he had me laughing about it praise praise to our wonderful and holy God who keeps me going who makes me laugh who is my joy and my happiness so anyway um, I guess the message that he wants me to convey from this is whenever something happens emotions rise up you immediately go to him and ask forgiveness like I said you don't know, I, I, it's probably pride that welled up in me also, you know, because I was embarrassed. <laughs> oh my goodness, I was laughing. I'm laughing at it now, but I was not laughing then. Uh, I can't even follow a pilot car. <laughs> so funny. But anyway, um, go to him immediately. When you feel like you need, like you've done something, and it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you, go to him immediately. Don't let it sit. Just go to him immediately, and and just remember that King Yeshua did everything on his cross for us. He did all the work. He took all our shame, all of our humiliation, and he took upon our all of our sins. So you go to him, you ask for forgiveness, and you move on, and that's what he wants you to do. He's already done all the work. He doesn't want you to dwell once you ask for forgiveness and to all sincerity and brokenness he is faithful and just to forgive you and he wants you to move on move forward in him as he leads you and um like i said he had me laughing about it probably minutes later but it's just those those moments that get you and um, doesn't matter how hard we try not to sin or not to get angry it's still going to happen but the difference is when you have King Yeshua in your heart when you're abiding with him or when he's abiding with you He's faithful and just to forgive you and then you move on after he's forgiven you you just keep moving on in him and following his lead and that's what he wants you to do he's so amazing so wonderful and if you don't know him my friend oh he's he's pure love he's just pure love he'll never condemn you but go to him and complete repentance in your heart complete sorriness complete heaviness 
for all of your sins and invite him into your heart. In Romans chapter 10, God tells you what you need to do to do that, to be saved. The first steps to salvate, on the road to salvation. Um, it's Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So those two things that you need to do in faith, because you have to have faith to believe in our beautiful King, in our beautiful Redeemer, our beautiful Savior, King Yeshua. That's the two things. So if you have any questions about inviting King Yeshua into your heart or walking with him, please feel free to email me at wndgross31260 at yahoo.com. I would love to hear from you. All right. So I will be reading Romans 8 today. And kind of long. So here I go. Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live af after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, 
but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I also want to add, when you come to King Yeshua and you ask him to be in your heart, to abide with you, stay in that repentant state as you walk with our King. Stay in a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Stay broken my friend, let him lead you. And when you know that you've done something wrong, repent immediately. Turn away from it. Always repent all throughout the day. Whenever you feel like you need to repent and Pick up your cross every day as you walk with our blessed Savior and deny your flesh. This is all in his word. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the four Gospels. And that's King Yeshua, Lord Jesus Christ. That's his very words that he spoke when he lived here and dwelt among men for he is all human and he is all God and he is perfect in every way and he is a glorious son of the Father let us praise our wonderful God our holy mighty, perfect and true, God Jehovah Elohim. I love you so much. I worship you and I praise you. 
and I will sing your praises forevermore. For I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. My Lord God Almighty, who is my fortress and my refuge, my hiding place, and you keep me hidden under your wings. For my life is Christ, and I am hid in Christ. I thank you for your great everlasting love. Thank you for loving me before the foundations of the earth. Thank you for creating me, forming me in my mother's womb. Thank you for knowing everything about me before you created me. You are true. You are faithful. And your word is true. Your word is truth. And your beautiful Holy Spirit leads us to your truth. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word tells how man should live for you. And you leave nothing out that we don't need to know. You've included everything for us. Thank you, Father, for you. Thank you for your beautiful Holy Spirit. And thank you for your beautiful Son, our Holy Savior, our Redeemer, our King. I love you so much. I will always worship you and praise you and exalt you and lift your name from the highest of the high. In King Yeshua's holy, perfect, conquering name, Amen and Amen. All right. Please take this word into prayer. First Peter 1, verses 7. <coughs> that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. I received this word from Father God Yahweh at 2.47 p.m. on 10 January 2016. My faithful and true daughter of mine, Wendy, write Father's holy and true words for all of my children to take note of. There are black clouds blowing in. These will begin to worsen as the weather will not be doing as is expected. There will be twists and turns coming up that will put my people in a panic mode. My faithful will be protected as I will look after mine own. I will allow certain things to happen to my chosen. I will sustain them in me. Many of you already have been shown your destinies in my heavenlies. Yes, there will be many different purposes, my flock. You will be cheerful doing them. There will be no sighing, no regrets, no unhappiness in my perfect eternity for you. This comes so soon, as I know each of your paths, bumpy at times, but I will keep you on my son Yeshua's narrow path. Do not take my son's grace for granted. Yes, you shall be saved by believing upon my son Yeshua HaMashiach. However, there is an agreement, just like I made a covenant with Abraham, my friend. Honor the agreement. Stay listening to and doing my son's commandments. Repent all of the time, not just when you are saved. 
I lift up the humble, but I will bring down the haughty spirit. Read my word for my further instructions on salvation, my people. Father God Yahweh, your salvation is in and through my son Yeshua has spoken. And I'll leave you with God's wonderful blessing to all of his children. A blessing that just lifts me up. And it blesses my soul. It's Numbers chapter 6, verses 23 to 27. Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. In the holy, perfect, and mighty name of King Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch HaShem Adonai, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and Shalom.